Okay. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call the meeting to order and note the members present at 6.31 p.m. We'll start off this evening's meeting with a land acknowledgement. We will begin this meeting by acknowledging that we are gathering on the land that has been inhabited by Indigenous people since time in the morning. We would like to recognize that we are in the Robinson Superior Creek Territory, and the land on which we are gathered today is the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe. Specifically, we acknowledge the neighboring community of Michigan First Nation, for whom we have great respect. We also recognize the contributions of all Indigenous people, including the Métis, in shaping and strengthening the community in the province of Ontario. Thank you, Nubich. We'll now move on to item number two, disclosure of pecuniary interest. Hearing and seeing none, I'll move on to approval of the agenda. May I have someone make a motion? Councillor Cannon? May I have somebody second it? Councillor Hatfield? All in favor? Carry. We'll start off now with our uh, room two, rather two delegations and presentations, and I'd like to welcome Ms. Yana to Halava. Sure. <laughs> to the floor. Yana, if you want to come up, um, Yana will be making Hello, everyone. Hi. Thank you for having me so much. I'm a little nervous, but uh, it's okay. It's good to be here. I believe it's good to be here. Thank you. I I came here to ask for more, not for giving stuff, but for ideas. Maybe if we get together as a town, maybe I get uh, more people involved all around, and it's all for Ukraine. I am here on behalf of Ukraine and all the people that are suffering right now. I'd like to thank you for having me. My name is Jana Struhalova, and I finally got brave and I emailed Lori. Thank you very much uh, for responding so fast to me also. And I'm here asking for your support and ideas uh, for Ukraine. Our community has many Ukrainians, some of them are still originally born in Ukraine, and we have also many, many of Ukraine descent. So my idea after years of, after year of sorrow and hopelessness, I don't know what happened. It just so. goes in and out, but it took. Sorry. After year of sorrow and hopelessness, how to help with more human way than do, going through donations online, which is greatly appreciated also, but uh, the heart telling me I have to do something else. So I finally came up with an idea after watching this video on YouTube of a little Ukraine girl receiving a tube. And that little girl was so happy and she danced and she laughed with the soldiers. And that's when I decided to do this. It's called Packages of Love to those closest to the front lines, those who are sick, elderly, that refuse to leave their homes, Living without water, electricity, children staying with grandparents because they have no place to go, their parents are dead. Parents are fighting for dead. Just regular living people, regular lives that need help. So and underwear apparently are on big demand right now, and a first aid kits also. Most needed and most appreciated, it's just an even little note from little children. I ask parents. I put the notes in those packages just to bring a little bit of a smile, right? So I came here to ask you to open your hearts. Maybe you can get your staff involved or come up with some idea and maybe give me a chance to let more people know with you having me here. I really, really appreciate that. We can all make a difference in someone's life. And I believe as a Canadian, now, I'm an immigrant from Czechoslovakia. I, I really believe that my duty is still to help 
you guys helped me, and I really feel like I have to help to be on. You know, and that smallest contribution, like, if you're, I guarantee you, you're going to be so rejuvenized and be so happy that you actually help the ones in need. So all I'm asking again is ideas. You guys always have ideas. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Liana. Um, are there any questions or comments from uh, Council? Council Harfield? Yeah, do you, uh, do you work at the United Church? No, no, I don't. I, I go there, but I never talk to them about it yet. Oh, that, that would be Diane Spencer, you know Diane? Oh, yes, I do. She's uh, pretty well in charge of that. But they send bags and bags out after their sales to have stuff. And if you went there and said, you know, socks and underwear, I, I think it would help you. That's a great idea. I actually went there for the church, though. And, but just and ask her, kind of, talk to her and ask her what you're doing. Okay, okay. And then if you guys don't mind, you know, because you always look everywhere, of course, you work in the area that you see and hear many things. If you come up with any idea how to save on shipping, that would be a big help too. It's not a big deal, but that just idea. What does it cost you, Yana, yeah, an average to ship it? It's, I'm shipping it to the uh, um, United Kingdom. There is an organization called Van Without Borders, and they deliver straight, they go to the most vulnerable places. So the one big package, the size, it's a pretty big package. It, it was $150. And, and I would suggest to you uh, the Rotary Club. Oh, thank you. They're very good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no, I was, I was. <laughs> Are there any other questions or comments for Yana? Yeah, I just wanted to uh, thank you very much for coming and bringing this uh, this very, very worthy cause to our uh, to our attention. Certainly, it's something that we hear in the news. The federal and provincial governments are supporting. So, I think it's um, it would be an honor. It's our honor to, to support this as a municipal government, because as you mentioned, um, and we're all aware we've got many of our descendants in Goa are from the Ukraine, from the Eastern European countries <coughs> that are all being affected by the war in Ukraine. Um, so I do have a number of ideas, and, and what I would ask you to do is um, to, to maybe write an email really outlining where, what I, Types of items that you're looking for, and the process, the logistical process, where you're trying to send them, um, and then maybe what we can do as a council and as a staff is is maybe that would make it easier to forward to our corporate connections and just kind of circulate that um, to our networks. Thank you. Because that's the one thing that we can offer is um, we. As a township, uh, you know, we're not, we have a fairly strict, um, I understand, donation policy, but we do have a very vast network of well connected. Um, that's sometimes, what I meant. I don't have to say it like that, so yes. nicely, but that's what I meant. Well connected, sometimes wealthy uh, beneficiaries. So um, if you do write something that you are able to circulate, amongst our networks and we might be able to uh, to support you. I will do that. Thank you very much. And we will ask uh, Daniel to uh, also put in a plug at uh, Jenna then because he's also in the gallery. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> thank you very much, Jenna. Well, thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you. I was a little... Okay. That's exactly what I... You did great. And on behalf of uh, Council, I will offer you a well <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Great job. Thank you. I'll help you with the uh, letter. That would be wonderful because I've got immigrant syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Good night. So I think next up on the agenda, and I'll just get more in a second to get everybody up on, uh, on Zoom.
is at a 4.2 fan can travel and tourism the roll out five year tourism plan and there's camelio hi camelio good evening everyone hello oh i think you're on mute oh are we gonna catch you yet not on mute Hello. Hello. Center one two. Testing. Testing. Good evening. We can hear you now. Pat James, can you hear me? I can. I can hear you. Okay. Can you try one more time? Hello, everyone. Can you hear us now? That's perfect. Perfect. Go ahead and your right, Camelia. Thank you very much, Mirilani. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, and uh, so, hello, Mayor. Hello, Council members, members of the public and community. Thank you for your time and opportunity to present on the finalized five-year tourism strategy and action plan for Wawa and area. I will share my screen uh, and just confirm that you can see our presentation. Yes, we can. All right, thank you very much. Um, so just to get started, you'll see here the title of the finalized action, uh, the tourism strategy and action plan report being our journey, Wawa's five-year tourism strategy and action plan. And we've had the pleasure of presenting to council before. Um, so we will just take some brief moments to reintroduce ourselves. Um, both Pat and James will be taking part in this presentation. So I'll pass it over to them before we get started to briefly introduce themselves and then I'll take it back. So uh, Pat, if you could just say hello and, and give the public and audience an introduction. Hello, everybody. My name is Pat Forrest, and um, I'm a tourism consultant operating in Northern Ontario. My office is in Kekebeka Falls, and uh, it's called Forrest Consulting. And for this project, I have been working with the team in the capacity of a Northern Ontario tourism specialist, and I'm happy to be here. Thank you, Pat. And James. Hi, everyone. So my name is James Atiaga, and I'm the tourism developer at Panikin. And for this project, I was the research and engagement coordinator. So worked to develop different tools and um, plan for different engagements that we did throughout the project. Um, I'm originally from Kitchener-Waterloo, um, but I'm currently in Toronto and really happy to be presenting this to you today. Thank you, James. And last but not least, my name is Camilo Montoya Guevara. I am the vice president over at Bannigan and have been playing the role of project manager across our work with the municipality of Wawa and its stakeholders. Um, I'm currently based in Victoria, but used to live and grew up in Toronto and had the great pleasure of visiting Wawa not once, but twice as part of this project. The first as part of our in-market research activities, and then the second time in November as part of the community sessions, which we'll speak a little bit more about in a moment. Um, as you'll see from this slide, we also have two additional team members in Trevor Jonas Benson, who's played the role of tourism development strategist, and Caroline Morrow, who played the complementary role to James in terms of research and engagement coordinator. Um, we are all a part and with Pat kind of working as a, a, a satellite team member of Bannikin, <laughs> the Bannikin team. Bannikin is a Canadian-based professional services company that specializes in strategy and development and um, public relations for tourism. Uh, as part of our strategy and development work, we research and develop tourism strategies with destination stakeholders, and we also co-design strategic business and product development plans and programs with tourism and tourism-related organizations and government bodies. In terms of our time with you today, um, we're going to be starting off with introductions, which we've just covered. And since we've had the pleasure of presenting on the process of the strategy and action plan development in November, at uh, one of the, the first incoming council presentations, we're going to focus today's presentation more so on the results of the process and the resulting uh, strategy and action plan. So 
We're going to move into a process overview where we will provide an overview of the project, including highlights from the research and engagement process. We will then move into the strategic direction that is identified for tourism for Wawan area, uh, including the areas of opportunity and the corresponding strategic actions. And we'll close our time with all of you today by sharing just some more details about the upcoming steps towards finalization of the project and the deliverable itself. So to get us started with the overview of the process, I'll pass it over to James. Right, thanks, Camilo. So recognizing tourism as a key economic driver and essential to community well-being, the municipality of Wawa engaged us at Bandican to develop this five-year tourism strategy and action plan. Uh, this project builds off past work, including the municipality of Wawa's strategic plan, planning to success 2021 to 2025, and the municipality's last tourism strategy, the trail, a work plan for Wawa's tourism industry, which was produced in 2002 and expired in 2008. The process designed and implemented um, to research and develop Wawa's five-year tourism strategy and action plan sought to engage diverse tourism stakeholders using a community-based participatory research approach. The research and engagement for this project took place between July 2022 um, to February 2023, with the ongoing support and uh, involvement of municipal staff. In addition, the Economic Development and Tourism Advisory Committee played an important role, um, participating in key informant interviews, attending community engagement sessions, and providing feedback on select outputs produced. At the onset of the project, a uh, project-specific goal and related objectives were set to guide uh, the process and ensure that the, that the process outputs and deliverable responded to the needs of the municipality. So the project goal was that by March 2023, the municipality of Wawa will have a comprehensive and actionable five-year tourism strategy and action plan to implement in collaboration with partners. The plan will establish an inspiring vision for Wawa and set the foundation to build resilience in and diversify its economy through tourism and in collaboration with community and tourism partners. So as part of the project, four phases were used, um, including phase one, the project initiation, management and communications, phase two, research and engagement planning, phase three, tourism landscape assessment, and phase four, action planning and report development. Through these phases, we were really pleased to see um, that our extensive outreach saw the engagement of 177 residents and 58 industry members through the industry and residents survey, as well as encouraged to have 18 community members attend our two in-person community engagement sessions during November. We also had one-on-one uh, -on -one interviews with 16 key informants from the community. We reviewed over 20 context setting documents, did a three-day, two-night in market um, research trip to explore Wawa as a visitor, um, and held a partner focus group that was attended by representatives from Algoma Country, Algoma Snow Plant Affiliation, the B Business Improvement Association, EdTech, Superior Country, West Dome Gold uh, Mine, <laughs> the Wawa Snow Riders Snowmobile Club, and Sandy Beach Caretakers. Across all our engagements, we reached out to um, existing and potential partners as part of the process, and we know there are many opportunities to grow these relationships moving forward. Um, however, as a result of the methodology that we use, we are very confident in having a good understanding of the current context of the tourism landscape in Wawa, including the community's perspectives. Um, I'll pass it now to Pat to talk about the factors affecting tourism. Okay, thank you, James. Yes, let's look at the factors affecting tourism in and around Wawa. So, first of all, there are many partners involved in Wawa's tourism industry, including residents and visitors tourism businesses, industry, and even Wawa's neighbors, such as Mishikot and First Nation and the fishing and hunting lodges in the region. So understandably, there were also many perspectives on what's needed, what needs to be done to build tourism. But from these various perspectives, we were able to identify four key areas that you see in front of you. Support for tourism development, Wawa's tourism story, community capacity needs, and offering tourism across the year. So first, support for tourism development. It'll be important for the businesses and the residents of Wawa to be engaged in the planning and implement implementation of this tourism strategy. 
And there also needs to be trust and understanding that's mutual. This can be achieved in a variety of ways, which we'll speak to later on in the presentation. Uh, Wawa's tourism story. Wawa has a lot of interesting stories, but they need to be told more consistently. To support telling a common story, Wawa needs to develop new partnerships and strengthen existing partnerships with organizations and others who can share and amplify Wawa's stories. And this will make the messaging and the impact all that much stronger. Community capacity needs. The message was also clear from the input that we received that tourism development in Wawa needs to be adequately resourced. And that's from a human resources perspective as well as a financial perspective. This could include exploring opportunities for funding such as grants and partnerships and implementing the MAT tax. Then offering tourism across the year, year round tourism it was agreed that there's a need to recognize Wawa as a place for tourism in all four seasons. This means that accommodations need to be available year round. More food and beverage and retail uh, businesses are needed. The downtown needs to be beautified. And that aspects of Wawa beyond its great outdoor offerings need to be developed and promoted. And I think it's back to you, Camilo. Right over. So drawing from those factors affecting tourism that were really a collection of the research, as Pat mentioned, the different perspectives shared throughout the project, the strategic direction for tourism in Wawan area is first shaped by a vision for tourism, which was developed through stakeholder and community member contributions. And then from that, um, the identification of supporting areas of opportunity and the strategic actions that make them, uh, which were identified through our work with the municipality's team and further informed by ETA contributions throughout the review process. So the first really foundational component here being the tourism vision for Wawa. As I mentioned, with contributions from residents, tourism partners, and businesses, a clear vision of how tourism and community improvement can coexist and complement each other was developed. Uh, this is a foundational for, component for the future of tourism in Wawa uh, in setting a shared vision that identifies both an inspiring direction for the municipality, as well as a broader community's efforts to improve and develop tourism. So, just as you'll see on the screen, um, this is the resulting vision statement for the future of tourism. A key component in the development of this vision were the community member contributions during the two in-person sessions held in November. Through a future visioning exercise, community members spoke of the future of Wawa as one where visitors recognize it as for its picturesque beauty, friendly community members, um, a place of remoteness within the heart of Algoma, among other descriptors. Con participants also pointed out um, a vision for the downtown as an area that has drastically changed with thriving businesses, places to visit, and a more beautiful look and feel. These community contributions were then enriched by the strengths and opportunities identified across the research to draft Wawa's five-year tourism action plan and um, helped shape it with a fuller picture of what Wawa could become as a place to both visit and explore. Through the first action planning session in the pro uh, as part of the, the project, the project team, including municipal staff, crafted the initial version, which was then enriched by feedback from the Economic Development and Tourism Advisory Committee before being revised and finalized with the municipality's team uh, as part of the report drafting and finalization. So I'll take a moment to just read out the mm -hmm. vision statement being that while a thriving tourism industry is recognized as a corner store, cornerstone of our economy and a contributor to the well-being of our natural environment and quality of life. Tourism in Wawa connects visitors and locals to our welcoming community whose unique Northern character, sustainable local businesses, spectacular scenery and proximity to Lake Superior make it a great place to live and visit. So, Kind of drawing from this um, vision for the future of tourism for supporting areas of opportunity were identified and I'll pass it over to Pat who will introduce these. 
So this section on areas of opportunity and strategic actions has been guided by the vision that Camila just spoke to, as well as the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and challenges that were identified. So we're going to now walk you through each area of opportunity. Uh, we're gonna talk about the objectives for each opportunity, and then the actions that will make the opportunity a reality. You'll see as we move through the four areas as well that we've also listed some anticipated outcomes uh, for the actions. So the first area of opportunity is really key to the success of the five-year tourism plan, and that's engaging stakeholders. So the municipality and its tourism partners will first work to increase understanding of tourism's economic, social, and environmental benefits. They'll also position tourism development as a contributor to the community and something for stakeholders to get involved in. The actions include conducting a yearly survey to determine the level of support for tourism, undertake an annual review of the positive impacts of tourism using a tool like the uh, Tourism Regional Economic Impact Model or TRIUM, you see there on the chart, or another tool. Share information on how to get involved in tourism. Uh, encourage support of community improvement projects and reach out to partners to increase collaborations. Perfect. So the second area of opportunity identified was to position Wawa as a place to uh, for visitors and locals to explore and enjoy. And specifically, Wawa is a worthwhile destination and hub for experiences and services in the region, as well as a necessary stop for many. However, Wawa is being featured in different ways and with different narratives across different channels. So there is no consistent storyline being told as part of the visitor journey into the region. To capitalize on the variety of visitor travelers that pass through uh, or stop in Wawa, um, whether as a rest stop or a multi-night trip, the opportunity exists to develop consistent messaging for Wawa as a base camp for outdoor activities and to integrate marketing efforts through regional partnerships. Um, supporting this area opportunity includes working with partnerships with regional marketing organizations um, to feature Wawa across a wider range of online channels um, with a unified voice and consistent messaging. And some of these uh, could be the Group of Seven Tours, uh, the Lake Superior Circle Tour, um, provincial parks around the area, local accommodations, and so on. And by doing this, it will work to, to present a genuine image of Wawa's four-year tourism opportunity and the range of activities that could inspire visitors to extend their stay. So as part of this area of opportunity, two objectives were identified. Um, the first is to establish and develop effective partnerships that position Wawa as a place to visit and explore. And to achieve this specific objective, uh, two area, two actions um, were identified. The first is to meet with regional partners regularly to collaborate on marketing and other relevant initiatives. And the second is to work with nearby destinations to develop itineraries that feature Wawa as a key destination. The second objective is to present Wawa with a unified voice and consistent messaging. To achieve this objective, three actions were identified. The first is to develop an integrated tourism marketing and communications plan to position Wawa as a must-see stop and hub to visit and explore. The second is to ensure that Wawa is being presented as a base camp for outdoor activities by local and surrounding businesses and attractions. And the third is to improve identified wayfinding information and infrastructure barriers both physical and digital, for visitors arriving and exploring Huawa. I'll pass it on to Camilla to speak about the third area of opportunity. Thank you, James. So the third area of opportunity highlights the need to increase capacity to focus on and pursue tourism development. Um, so it's both capacity within the municipality's tourism team and capacity within the broader tourism community. Um, it to, to fully pursue tourism as an economic and community building opportunity, the municipality, its partners, business owners, and operators, as well as residents need to work together toward growth. Um, and with this in mind, two specific objectives were identified toward realizing this area of opportunity. The first objective within this area of opportunity is to build capacity within the municipality's tourism team. Um, this will be achieved um, by 
focusing on consistently applying to tourism funding programs to secure financial and human, re uh, human resources for the implementation of the tourism strategy and action plan. The second action that corresponds to this objective is to establish a tourism development fund by implementing a Wawa municipal accommodation tax, which we'll also just highlight was already recommended in the 2021 to 2025 municipal strategic plan. The second objective identified within this area of opportunity is to support industry capacity development. So to achieve increased communication and stronger relationships with indigenous peoples, the municipality should continue to support opportunities for partnership with the Michipacan First Nation and other indigenous tourism organizations, such as Indigenous Tourism Ontario. The second action informing this objective is to conduct and share research into existing and potential target markets to inform targeted marketing efforts as well as product development or product enhancement that best matches um, an evolved understanding of who is seeking Wawa, who is already coming to Wawa. And the third action informing the second objective is to support industry members in improving their services and products. And I would say particularly that here, um, enhancing their online and in-person storytelling so that, again, as we've highlighted, both consistent messaging is being displayed throughout the visitor journey, but Wawa is also being um, positioned as a hub for outdoor adventure, outdoor experiences, <laughs> and a place to stay in and explore. So this is the fourth and final opportunity area of opportunity for Wawa and its tourism community to work on over the next five years. Enhancing its assets, products and services to offer variety and quality all around the year, year round. Wawa already has a good base of assets and resources to draw from, but more work is needed to connect these to local businesses and to purchasable experiences. There's also the need to continue improving or revamping certain infrastructure, such as the look and, the feel of, look and feel of the downtown area. The first opportunity is um, to encourage entrepreneur, entrepreneurship and promote business opportunities that draw from or evolve existing spaces. Then the second one is the enhancement and development of tourism, assets, products, and experiences and services that contribute to Wawa's value as a place to enjoy tourism across all four seasons. The actions include supporting new business development, using the Travel Information Center uh, more fully to encourage visits to local businesses, enhancing downtown and the area's trails, identifying gaps in accommodations, and finally, enhance existing and create new products, such as adding local arts, culture and history experiences to existing outdoor experiences, just as one example of what could be done. Thank you, Pat. So we've just gone through a quick overview of the 21 actions that have been identified within the four areas of opportunity that map the five-year strategy and action plan for tourism growth in Wawan area. At this stage in the project, we have finalized the development of the vision, the areas of opportunity and strategic actions with direct input from municipal staff and ATTAC members. This it also includes our work with the municipality team on the project to review and reconcile all suggested edits, feedback provided across the review of outputs. Importantly, we also coordinated and facilitated an implementation planning meeting with the municipality's team to review the implementation planning framework in discussion and begin its development as a group. And then through this meeting, we work with um, municipal staff, Alex, Jesse, and Maury to identify the uh, potential timeline for specific actions, the leads, and other key details as well as begin drafting the tactics that will make up the year by year work plans to implement the strategic actions. The development of the implementation plan is currently being pushed by the municipal staff and we will reconnect um, towards the end of March so that we can further support in building out this important tool that will go through a year by year um, 
development process. So it's more of a, a living tool that accompanies the strategy and action plan. I'll also mention that as part of the implementation planning meeting, um, we work to support the municipality with identifying the best channels and practices for socializing the final five-year tourism strategy and action plan amongst tourism stakeholders and those that have participated in the process once it's finalized. Um, so in terms of immediate next steps, the strategy and action plan report is currently being designed by the creative designer that we work with as part of the project scope um, and will be finalized by the end of the month. So that brings us to the end of our presentation. So we just want to thank you again for your time and attention, and we're happy to take time now to discuss any questions that you may all have. Thank you very much, Paleo. Council, does anybody have any questions or comments for our community? I'm seeing none, but I'm, I'm wondering if Council Cannon has any <laughs> as, as, she, as she prepares for microphone. Okay. Go ahead, Council Cannon. I read your whole presentation. And in the whole presentation, I didn't see any mention of the marina and the boating. Did you look into any of that when you were doing your research? So uh, through you, Mayor, to Councillor, and sorry, apologies, Councillor, I did not catch uh, your last name. Cannon. Cannon, thank you. Um, Councillor Cannon, we did look at the marina as a potential area of um, further development um, across the project and any opportunities that may come from access via water. Um, however, in our work with the, the municipalities team um, came to not identify it as a priority area of opportunity for the coming five years um, due to its current state of the the current state of the infrastructure itself um i can pass it to my team members in case they have anything to add or the municipal leads as well in case they'd like to add details um, to your question i think the only thing that i would add is that because of the ongoing divestiture process and our uncertainty while we were developing the plan with where that was going to land us, we didn't sink a whole lot of time into it because of the unknowns. So a lot of the objectives that are identified can apply to the marina just like any one of our other assets, but it wasn't identified specifically. We, we asked the team of mannequins to not put a whole bunch of effort Solely because of how unknown the process of divestiture was at the time we were doing the research. So, certainly, in consideration for us as staff in the actions that we can apply a lot of the actions to the facility, was the action activities that we do at the facility, but it wasn't singled out specifically. Thank you very much, Paul. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, um, I'd like to close up, uh, Camilio, to thank you very much for all your hard work on this. I'm looking forward to um, understand that the next step is to to go through the implementation plan. And I believe um, that's really going to net out the actionable items in this plan. So um, I'm very excited for that step. So uh, thank you very much. and. Um, I look forward to for council to see that and to participate in that process um, in the next step. So thank you and have a great night. Thank you very much, Mayor and Councillors. Have a good night. Bye bye. Excellent. So we'll move on to item number five, adoption of minutes. Item 5.1, Committee of the Whole Meeting, Tuesday, February 21st, 2023. May I have a motion to accept the Committee of the Whole Meeting meeting minutes? Councillor Hoffman? Have a second? Councillor Hoffman? 
All in favor? Carry. Item number six, business arising out of the previous meeting. 6.1. Kevin Sabber now. Kevin, go ahead. Um, I presented a memo for a follow-up to a request from Maryland Council to put an invitation out to comment on the uh, proposed policy of uh, feeding wildlife in the community and reporting that there is no comments or questions received. Does anybody have any questions or comments about this? So Kevin, I did have a question about this. Um, so I noticed that I know that there are no questions or comments from the public. Um, so my question to you and to any other members of council, do you believe that no comments from the community warrants a bylaw to be enforced? Because from my perspective, I kind of see it the other side of the coin. There is no comments or questions from the community. I feel like there's it's not a priority. That was my perspective. Well, I, if there's no comments, it's because people want to have, from my perspective, that they would like this by law in place so that these predators aren't coming into our community. Any thoughts or comments? Yeah, I agree with Kevin. Um, I think we should do a bylaw. Just so that we have it in place. Councilor O'Connor? I would like to agree with Kevin also. Any other questions or comments? Are any other comments? So, as I understand, the bylaws is, um, is on the regular council meeting. Uh, coming up on the agenda. Councilor Hopkins? Does this include the mission? That was the municipality of Albany, yes. Okay. So, Councilor Hopkins, our boundaries are right in Catfish. Yeah, but I, I didn't know if this was going to be the mission. Sometimes the mission gets So we move on to uh, item number seven, new business. Kevin, go ahead. This is also you. So this um, uh, request for proposal is in just a draft moment. I just wanted to express that before I move forward with this memo. So if you saw mistakes in dates and times, it's because it's not complete. Um, I'm still reviewing with staff to make sure that we have all uh, legal uh, comments and statements in there to proceed so that it's a proper document. Um, what we're looking for is a uh, fire service review and a community risk assessment. Now uh, it's to Review the current and anticipated community risks and needs over the next five years, and we'll examine research and review all aspects of fire department operations, planning, fire prevention, public education, training equipment, human resources, budget, and general emergency preparedness. The, uh, the idea of putting both of them together is when I re researched other communities, the two reports work together which will then allow for uh, Mayor and Council and the municipality to come up with a, um, a fire service plan, master plan, at the end of this. Um, both reports have multiple um, uh, mandatory profiles that they have to look at, so it will be an extensive report for coming forward to council. So it's more of just an information document for you to see what moving forward we're trying to do something with fire services in the community. Is there any questions or comments for a 
And Kevin, this is a legislative requirement, is it not? Yes, both both are legislated by the government president. And before I put the proposal out, council or anybody can come and see me prior to March 13th. If you have any questions or comments, if you need information. Thank you very much. Item 7.2, fire advisory committee, council appointees. Thank you, Mayor. And um, as a verbal report, uh, uh, tonight's regular portion of the meeting, um, the fire review committee bylaw is uh, being included for consideration by council um, in anticipation that that bylaw uh, will likely pass um, based on previous council comments. I wanted to put forward that we will need uh, uh, two councillors, council and mayor, um, two councillors to uh, put their name forward sit on the committee. I have also contacted the association, asked them to forward the name for consideration of the committee. Um, so if council would uh, discuss tonight and possibly select two representatives, at the next regular meeting on March 21st, we'll appoint all members to sit on the committee. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there any questions? Seeing none, we'll move on to item 7.3, while we'll be at 8. Sorry, Mayor, I was hoping council would select their members tonight unless you wanted to do otherwise. Does somebody want to volunteer? I would like to sit on that board, on that committee. Is there any other volunteers? Also. So we have uh, two volunteers, Councilor Hoffman and Councilor Cannon. Is there any objection to them? Thank you, Mayor. Now, we are going to move forward <laughs> to item 7.3 of all of BIA. And my apologies to Mayor and Council. I was on holidays and uh, did not have an opportunity to put in writing the following. Um, again, the uh, discussion around the dissolution of the Wallow BIA was brought forward to Council in January. Uh, council agreed to proceed with the public comment period uh, for 60 days. We uh, contacted every member of the BIA to advise them that Council was considering dissolving the BIA. Um, that period has concluded. And uh, uh, to report to Council, the only correspondence we received was from uh, one member, um, Mrs. Betty McGee, uh, that uh, uh, letter from Mrs. McGee was shared with Council at a previous meeting. Uh, she voiced her objections to, uh, to closing the BIA. Um, and to remind Council, the uh, BIA itself uh, and its member uh, board members did pass a resolution uh, supporting the dissolution of the BIA. Those were the only two uh, pieces of comments to come forward in this 60-day notice process. So uh, staff is recommending that uh, council consider reading the bylaw to dissolve the BIA for the second and third reading at tonight's regular meeting. Thank you. Is there any questions or comments? Councilor Hatfield? Lori, it's kind of ironic that we listen to a presentation and we have to work with our businesses and the businesses don't want to be part of the BIA. Maybe that's something we could ask Vatican how to work with the businesses. Get to uh, get online with them again. I appreciate that comment and also agree. I think as uh, uh, council finds opportunity hopefully uh, by the end of April to have another uh, strategic planning refresh session so we can look at the previous strategic plan uh, with the lens of this council uh, putting its mark on the plan around uh, priorities, that that might be something council would include uh, because uh, certainly I support that uh, uh, whether it's uh, through a business survey or a follow up through some of the tourism recommendations that we outreach to the business to 
to so council understands what maybe the issues are and uh, you set a new way of communicating with the business. So I support that, Councillor Hatfield, and it's something uh, staff will keep in mind and follow up with. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there any other comments? So am I okay to uh, proceed? Okay, so there is nothing in item number eight nor item number nine. So we'll move on to number 10 at next meeting date, Tuesday, March 21st, 2023. Item number 11, adjournment, close of meeting. So we'll close the meeting at 7.22 p.m. Can I have a meeting? Councilor Hoffman? All favor? Carried? And if you want to just give us one or two minutes to rewatch the corporate session. So we'll call the meeting to order and note the members present at 7.22 p.m. Item number two, disclosure of pecuniary interest. Seeing or hearing that, we'll move on to item number three, approval of the agenda. 3.1, approval of the agenda. Moved by Councillor Pado, second by Councillor Hatfield, resolved that the agenda for the regular meeting of Council scheduled for Tuesday, March 7th, 2023, be approved as amended. All in favor? Carry. Item number four, delegations and presentations. There are none. Item number five, announcements of giving and giving of notice. Are there any announcements, councillors? I would like to make one. I would love to bring up um, the fact that the um, municipality of Wallace, more specifically the, uh, the federal um, election riding of Algoma Manitou and Kept Spacing, will be um, losing uh, one seat. Um, effective uh, in June, um, the Algoma Manitou and Kept Spacing riding will be lost, and uh, Walla from White River South uh, to Sault Ste. Marie will be amalgamated with the Sault Ste. Marie Friday. Um, so the 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 elbow man to encapsulate the garden is will be eliminated. So um, that is is something that hasn't been discussed at the council table, nor have we officially received um, notice, but it has been discussed on CBC News and and on CTV News. So I thought it was was um, so I feel like it's. You know, the writing is on the wall for, for very likely that this will happen provincially as well. So it just, it's one step for the community to, our voice to be to be lost and to be drowned out um, and kind of gobbled up by a larger urban center. So it's something that we need to be aware of and cognizant of. So, uh, yes, it did go So that's just one announcement uh, that I would like to make. So I pray it's good. There are many other announcements and, um, and notice of many meetings on the agenda. So please take a notice. Item number six adoption of minutes 6.1. Moved by Councillor Pato, second by Councillor Hatfield, resolved that the following minutes of the meeting of Council be adopted as presented. Minutes of a regular meeting of Council held on Tuesday, February 21st, 2023, as contained on pages 1 to 7, inclusive of the minute book. All in favor? Carried. Item number 7, correspondence. There's two items this for correspondence. Why is there anything that we should take particular um, on the letter from the Honorable Carolyn Mulroney, um, 
I don't have it in front of me, Mayor, my apologies, but uh, we were allocated some additional monies under the uh, uh, Ontario gas tax program. I believe it was ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000. So um, that was good news uh, from uh, provincial government. And uh, the second letter has to do with some changes that are under uh, consideration that uh, in the corresponding shared with council, there's always a way for councils individually to provide comment on these proposed amendments. Uh, I don't believe they'll impact the community uh, negligibly, uh, but it has to do with uh, how long uh, floating accommodations can uh, remain on water, which has become more of a problem in southern Ontario as housing gets more expensive. People are looking for innovative ways to uh, to live on water. So it has to do with houseboats and accommodations on water. So um, those were the two responses. Thank you very much. So, um, regarding the gas tax, we was at $25,000, so a little bit more. And um, the second point, of course, was maybe of interest to those on the board. I heard you. Perfect. Um, item number eight, consent agenda. Moved by Councillor Cannon, seconded by Councillor Hoffman, resolved that the items listed under the consent agenda. Items 8.2 to 8.3 be approved as recommended. All in favor? Carried. Staff reports? There are none. Business arising out of previous meeting, uh, new business and rules of motion, there are none. Item number 13, bylaws. Did I skip over 8.2? Yes, something happened. I made the I'm sorry, Mayor, it was my error. Um, if I may retract and if we would go back to item seven, I know that 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 must be wrong. I'm sorry. Um, I read that one already. Put two to eight point three, and then what is this? Staff reports. There are none. So this is not valid. I didn't read this. This one's not valid. Correct. But there are no staff reports, and this says staff reports. You see the report. That's consent agenda. Oh, so I don't read those. Okay. Sorry, Mayor. My error. Keeping that. Oh, but they're just not in order. That's it. Thank you, Don. So I apologize, Mayor. I just had to mix up on my resolutions. I believe we're at item 13 now, if I'm correct. Correct. Sure. I'm on track. Thank you. So the motion is uh, moved by Councillor Cannon, second by Councillor Paddle. Resolved that the following bylaws be introduced and read a first, second, and third time and finally passed. And that the mayor and clerk do sign and seal the same, any rule of this council to the contrary notwithstanding. Bylaw number 3577 23 to confirm the proceedings of council at its meeting held on the 7th day of March 2023. Bylaw number 3578 to prohibit the meeting of wildlife within the municipality of Wawa. Bylaw number 357923 to establish and appoint a Wawa Municipal Fire Advisory Committee for the municipality of Wawa. And bylaw number 358023 to Enter into an agreement with Donald L. Davidson Fuels for the supply and delivery of aviation gas and Jet A1 fuel for the municipal airport. All in favor? Carry. Item 13.6. Thank you. I moved by Councillor Hoffman, seconded by Councillor Cannon. Resolved that the following bylaw be read a second and third time and finally passed, and that the mayor and clerk do sign and seal the same. Any rule of this council to the contrary notwithstanding, bylaw number 3565 23 to dissolve the Wawa Business Improvement Area. All in favor? Excellent. Item number 14, closed session, 14.1, moving into a closed session. Resolved that this committee proceed in camera at uh, 7.31 p.m. In order to address the following matters pertaining to um, item number one, legal issue, marina divestiture. It's related to a proposed or pending acquisition or disposition of land by the municipality. 
um, for a local board. And item number two, a legal issue. It's an offer to purchase property and it's related to a proposed or pending acquisition or disposition of land by the municipality or local board. All in favor?
I'm meeting Rick. This is the rising from full session and the number 15, there is none. Next meeting date, 16.1, Tuesday, March 21st, 2023. Item number 17, adjournment. Move. Moved by Councillor Cannon, seconded by Councillor Hoffman, resolved that the meeting closes at 8.24 p.m. All in favor? Close.